Thank you, sir. A very warm welcome to one and all to the 103rd knowledge sharing session of OHR, which is scheduled today on Saturday, 15th of October, 2022 at 7 p.m. on Zoom platform. And today's topic will be management by results, MBR. And we have a wonderful speaker today, Mr. Indrajit Sen Gupta. Before we proceed further, I request all to please be on mute. And if possible, please keep your video on. I'll not be able to keep my video on due to network issues. And uh, this video will be available later on YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, please feel free to post in the chat or ask later in the Q&A session. Thank you. As we all know the importance that the Supreme Almighty hold in our life, so I request everyone to please come together for the prayers and repeat after me. Oh God. Oh God. Bless all with health and wealth. Bless all with health and wealth. Health and wealth. Bless, bless all with money and harmony. Bless all, bless with, all money with money and harmony. Money and harmony. Oh God, bless all with peace and bliss. Oh God, oh God. Bless, all with, bless all with peace and bliss. Bless all with wisdom and your devotion. Bless all with bless wisdom, all wisdom and your devotion. Thank you, everyone. Moving forward, introducing OHR to everyone. As you all are aware that OHR is primarily an informal help, self-help group of and for HR professionals, including those in IR and allied professions, as well as researchers who have passion to do better all the time. Only HR was started eight years ago as a self-help group. A few sensitive and enthusiastic HR professionals experienced a need to help themselves and others in the professional community so as to give better result in their prospective organization, as, as well as rise to be a preferred partner of community of HR professionals. It is overwhelming to see that we have been able to positively influence thousands of HR professionals and are not only have we become a trust, but trusted name in HR fraternity. And with this, we invite you all to become part of this knowledge sharing session by becoming a member in any one of the WhatsApp group of OHR. Also, you can become a knowledge sharing member by paying an annual fee and get multiple benefits uh, of which Sir has shared in the chat box. You can contact Sir or Nint. And along with, uh, and along with it, OHR has also come up with wonderful ideas of monthly sessions, Power K Breakfast, PSR, and WWR. Now, introducing our speaker, Mr. Indrajit Sen Gupta. He is having 13 years of experience in HR domain and focuses mainly on learning and OD, talent management and performance consulting. Started his career with Mahindra CIE, subsequently worked with Dalmia Cement, ACJ Worldwide, Yusung TND, currently associated with British Petroleum, BP as advisor for global talent, agility and transformation. And the takeaway from this session for you will be philosophy of MBR, KRA alignment with BSC. What is BSC? Smart goals, errors in appraisal and bell curve analysis. And before asking Intrajit to please uh, continue with the presentation, we have a wonderful announcement to be made at the end. So please do not try to miss that. Over to you, Indrajit. Thank you so much, Sukruti, for your kind words. May I request everyone to please uh, switch on their videos so that I can see everyone. It's, it's, it's that I am I'm, I'm able to see me only. I can't see anyone, if possible. Thanks, level. Anyone else coming on video mode? Thanks, Aniket. Thanks, Antosh. Harsha, thank you for this. Thanks. Thanks, Dashat. So um, before I begin, thank you, OHRT management for giving me this opportunity to speak. Um, seldomly you get such opportunities to speak and it's very rare for a married person to speak. So that's all. Thank you for the OHR team for this. And um, before we begin, I would like to share my screen and um, thank you for the responses which you have shared with the questionnaire which I had um, 
or OHR had um, given it to you. So I will be sharing my screen with you for that. Let me know if you are able to see my screen. Is my screen visible? Yes, no, please. I can see all those. So that's why if you can just let me know if, if you are able to see my screen. Yeah, it's visible. It's visible. Great. Yeah, it's so we visible, had, uh, Thank you. yes, thank you so much. So we had around 20 responses. There were six questions. And so the first question was, does your company have a balance scorecard? Around 55% have said no. Okay. And around 45% have said yes, or maybe this, let's comment this. The second question is, have you seen your company be a balance scorecard? Again, 65% uh, have said no, and 35% have said yes. Third question is, when do you set your KRAs? Uh, this is good to see that uh, almost 50% have said that we set it on the first month, that is on in, in the month of January. Uh, do you have an individual development plan? The fourth question was 50% said yes, 50% said no. Fifth question was, does your manager set your goals, KRAs or KPIs? Around 70% said yes, that my manager sets my KRAs or KPIs. Okay. And finally, do you have a say in your goal setting? 75% said yes and 25% said no. Is this okay? Yes, yes. And yeah, any questions with this? Indra, some of the companies who are following the uh, financial year, they might set their KRAs in the month of March or April. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. But normally, means, um, the percentage would be less for that? No, Those I'm just saying. The... No, I'm saying just your question number third. Yeah. So when you set your KRAs, that like means. 10, 18 uh, percent means 18 responded responded like they are setting in the first month. I hope so. I could read that like that. Okay, so if we see this is 40 percent, five and five, so around 50 percent said in the second half, almost in or say in, in the month of March. If, if you okay. can just click on this, so that's how we have. Anyways, thanks thanks for this, and I will be now sharing the PPT. Is the PPT visible? Is it visible? Yes, no. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Just one second. Apologies for this. Just give me a second. I'll just share my screen. Uh, let me know if it is visible. No, not yet. Why? Sorry for this, just give me a moment because this is not the, the technologies is playing with me. Now it should be visible. Yeah, we can see. Yes. Okay, great. So what is MBR? So the philosophy of MBR is it is a strategic mod management model that aims to improve the performance of an organization by clearly defining the objectives that are agreed by both management and the employees. So it means that both your manager and the employee have a say in their goal settings. Now, what is MBR? MBR is a future oriented process uh, and a guide about what an organization is, what it does and why it does. MBR also includes planning for results and that's why it's called as management by results. And finally is that what happens if uh, you or the employee have a, go have a say in the goal setting and the action plans that encourages participation and commitment among employees as well as aligning the objectives of the individual KRAs with the with the company KRAs. Um, it would have been very dull if someone would have told you like, 
दिस हैज टू बी डन ये करना है ये नहीं करना है एंड विद दिस वॉट वुड हैपन इज दैट होल हार्टेडली यू वुड नॉट बी डूइंग स्टफ यू वुड बी सेंग ओके फाइन दीज गोल्स हैव बीन गिवन बाय माय मैनेजर टू मी एंड आई डोंट एग्री विद दैट and what happens if don't agree with those planning and those coordination with goal settings that goes for a toss um clear with this i can't see you so that's why i can yes 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 whether it is clear or not and mind you bef- uh, between in between you can ask any questions please um you can ask any any kind of stupid question also if you want if you if you feel like no questions are stupid it's just that your understanding for this has to be cleared and i will yeah. try to oh. clear all most of the questions sorry what, what can i ask a question yes please what is the difference between mbr and mbo so um what's the end result of an of an um, organization to do is to earn profits right correct so your objectives might or might not fetch you the results but with mbr what happens is, or the object is it might have been given by your manager and said that yes indrajit this is what i feel you should do but with okay. mbr what happens is as i explained is that you both together sit in a common place and then decide like this is the company vision okay. this what we have to be doing for this year thank you expense thanks thank you okay all right so uh, after seeing this um, picture what comes into your mind anyone can speak any anything whatever you feel so anybody anyone oh. would like to say different opinions yes any anyone else anything else i was about to say the same different perception to the same object okay okay so, nobody seems to be aligned great great so this picture is by bud blake he is an um, american cartoonist and i just fetched it from the internet so what this says is that these different individuals uh, different person is saying that i am visiting on the mars or to or to mars sorry the second one is saying that i am riding a horse the third is i am sailing in a boat fourth is saying that we are on a concorde and flying to paris the last person is actually um a sensible guy and he is telling to his dog who doesn't understand anything and says that i am on a trunk of tree with a bunch of crazies so in simple stuff if this picture uh, shows that if your care is are not aligned to the business goals you end up in a mess so to give you an example what happens is like your manager says like in in the earlier said as i told you all that if your manager decides your goals and says that this has to be done and it is not aligned to the business goal there's a chaos there's a mayhem and this is what happened with this picture and that's why if in the survey if you have seen that around 70% have said that my manager sets the goals so that's a point of concern but indrajit in that yeah. option in that option yes. ideally there should have been a third option which says that it, goals are set mutually agreed but then that was the point whole point of of telling you all people that this is how that has to be done so that's why i'm here to explain this okay. so just wanted right. to understand that so so just we'll just skip sure. this on 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 the uh, this report okay clear with this yes 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 thanks balance score card uh, you all must be aware of balance score card and when i ask the question like have you seen a company balance score card or do you know your uh, about your balance company balance score card around 65% of people have said no so what is balance score card now what's the main objective of a company to earn or to achieve that's a question which i've asked 
basically profit profit and prosperity great any anyone else okay so the main aim is to, is to earn profits um so that is ye tarazu hai yaha main sirf profits mein kamaunga main baki ke sab cheez niche rakh dunga so balance nahi hoga so that's why the perspective which came is that it's a balance score card you have to balance all these four parameters worldwide um these four parameters are being considered for making a balance score card and balance score card is nothing but the company goals so in financial perspective what we see is that what does success look like for our stakeholders like if our stakeholders uh, ask was the company balance sheet or how is the financial um, health of the company <coughs> so with that financial perspective you have these tangible outcomes which are return on investments operating profits and ebitda these are major three but then there can be other aspects also this is one with customer what do you see is that we want to achieve our vision so what we must do to achieve our customer needs so it can be like say the outcomes can be customers or promoters scores retention or growth of the customers can i ask you a question is that um what do you feel or who are your customers internal customer may be our uh, different different employees and uh... yes external may be different different parties or uh, you know different different great suppliers uh, like great this. great and who gives you the monthly salary or who gives you the performance payout and stuff like this uh, basically uh, organizations gives it but uh, customer also uh, stakeholders stakeholders. Uh, stakeholders great so so that 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 clear is that again customer is also very important um is someone on mute because i can hear a background noise okay thanks third is process perspective so to satisfy your customers and stakeholders at which processes we must excel so say for example your company takes an audit it can be an internal audit or external audit just to understand like whatever process you are doing and you might have everyone gone through the audits it might be a ts audit or it must be the is audits you people have been going through audits and then with the audits there are some ncs and so, or some um, some uh, improvement areas which which come out and then you say that yes this processes we need to um, improvise or the second thing stuff is that there are some surveys which you conduct and then you say that through this survey this process needs to be improvised so to satisfy your customers and stakeholders the processes which needs to be improvised is um taken care by the process perspective and finally learning and growth so with learning and growth what do you see is that fair enough we have done everything we have taken care of finance we have taken care of customers we have taken care of process but with this what does my what does my employee learn with so for this year will there be a training session how does my employee see um, me as a promoter or does or does the employee promotes me for for different areas stuffs like this so in a nutshell um, if you can see this yes money is important but other three areas are also important so lakshmi to chahiye aur lakshmi ke sath saraswati bhi chahiye any questions with this i thought uh, sorry uh, to interrupt uh, yeah i thought why not the customer at the top because without him the money is not going to come yeah no sir this is not uh, kept in a particular manner but just uh, the flow is like this financial customers are process because the main aim is finance to just see that how well we are doing but this uh -huh. can be this, that's not the sequence which we follow okay can, so it, you are saying that these are not the priorities these are the four dimensions of the yes. entire organization yes yes i mean this is what the organization exists for kind of exactly correct <laughs> you have used the word vision here yes we often come across words uh, used as vision mission <laughs> what is the difference between the two really so and um, i'll just give you an example with yeah. this 
so mission is a long term process vision is a short term process and i'll explain you why because people you might not agree with me also like uh going to moon is a mission right or mars mm. is a mission going to mars is a mission mm. now once we have reached mars and how we are reaching mars like da 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 this year we will do this next year we will do this third year we will do this right mm. Mm. now you have reached mars mm. so why what's the need to go again to mars for next year because your mission has been completed right mm. going to mars is your mission correct so why do you need to go again or say after a few years why do you need to move again to mission to that mission और से स्वच्छ भारत अभियान स्वच्छ भारत अभियान कर लिया ना सर हो गया स्वच्छ हो गया अपना एरिया स्वच्छ हो गया वापस क्यों करना है सो दैट्स व्हाई मिशन अकॉर्डिंग टू मी इफ यू आस्क मी इट्स द बिगर वन विजन इज हाउ डू यू अचीविंग दैट मिशन वेल यस ऑफ कोर्स आई एग्री विद यू मिशन इज द पर्पस ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड विजन इज व्हाट यू विजुअलाइज फॉर सर्टेन गिवन पीरियड ऑफ टाइम एज यू चूज टू डिसाइड ओके या accepted so that's why mission is the north star and vision is so that's why you say that it's it's a short term or long term vision you don't say it's it's a long term mission or short term mission yeah. is the vice versa any questions and please ask i i would love to ask uh, i would love to answer your questions i might not be able to answer everything but would definitely try good to go able to yes, understand please. is it very fast i am not able to um uh, see you all people so that's why i am not able to see that whether i am um i'm connecting with you people so yes indrajit your piece is perfect thanks thanks yeah so how do we link the kras to the balance score card so balance score card we explain i explain you like what's balance score card now so balance score card in a nutshell is the company goals the md or the ceo or who is whoever is the top boss has his own kras his report is have a linkage to those kras which he has taken and finally that particular team which that head of operations or head finance or head sales or head hr is is heading they take their individual kras so if you can see this is a chain like the balance score card then the md takes some goals then the head of operations or head finance takes some goals and the operation teams and the finance teams and below down people takes the goals so what happens is there is a theory which theory of constant which says that the chain is not strong as its weakest link so if you if you if you observe this is a chain if any one of this this person said like say for example the head finance says says bullshit with your krs md i don't agree with whatever we are doing i will take something else the whole pyramid collapses so it, this is just like a house of cards so you have to align with each of it so that's why the linkage of krs to bsc is very important and that's why if with the survey which i asked is that please go back to your company or to go back to your bosses and ask like whether do we have a bsc uh, or how does it look like stuffs like this clear with this yes indra ji yes 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 thanks so this is a sample of Uh, a company it us is nothing but iski topi uske sir that's the full form so that's this this thing just uh, imaginary company so if you can see there are four categories the finance the customer the process and learning and growth there are certain percentages which each of it like finance is 35% customer is 25% process is 25% and learning and growth is 15% and if you see like now it is balanced so that's why the term balance score card because you are balancing each and every each and every dimensions or perspectives of it you can say for finance you can say from 35 to 40% but it can't be like finance can be 60% and red, rest of that get skewed so what happens if you take finance as 60% the rest 40% you have to distribute here and that is a different loop that is not a balance score card that is skewed 
chart altogether so that's category then there is an objective like with finance there are different objective which you take with objective you also have a measure of performance like how are you measuring increase in revenue or increase in profitability or with learning and growth if you say with particular with hr how you are employ improving employee satisfaction so with measure of performance you see like yes i am going to do this for this year you also give some weightages to these different dimensions like say for example for learning and growth the total percentage is 15 and it has been segregated like percentage of improvement over last year's course that is the survey scores which you have taken that's 5% weightage and training mandates or employee per year is 10% what you have taken and there are different levels for it like say for example if you want 100% you have to achieve level 5 if you want 80% you will achieve level 4 level 3 is 60% and level 2 is 30% just to give you a uh, give you a heads up of this is that level 3 is basically the benchmark or what you have scored for the last year so for the level 3 would be the benchmark for this particular year so this is the bare minimum which you are going to achieve this year based on that you will be improving any questions with this I just want to seek one clarification, Indrajit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Weightages that you discussed, thirty-five yes. and whatever yeah. uh, based yeah. of it. Yeah. Are they constant? Are they something that you see across all industries? Are they something that remains so all the time and reasonable period of time? What is it? Can you uh, can you provide some more uh, understanding of this? That's a great question, actually. So what happens is, sir. Um, what normally i have observed is um over the certain period of time when the company is not in a very good um, financial health the finance percentage shoots up and the rest of the processes um take a hit so say for example if uh, if if to give you an example if your company health is not that good what you do is that you focus to earn revenue you focus to earn profitably and blah 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 stuffs like this mm -hmm. so you take financials as 60% you take mm -hmm. customers around 25% so that becomes 85% and the rest 15% then gets distributed between process and learning mm -hmm. now the question which comes to my mind is the cost of an employee uh not attaining new skills is higher than um sorry is uh, yeah the cost of employees not attaining a new skill is higher than if you are attaining a new skill so if you invest more in learning and development in your dire time what happens is your attrition stays um to bare minimum there is a motivation amongst the employees mm -hmm. and once your financial position improves you get good results this is my okay. understanding with it all right so, this, so based on the priority. i think let's not go into those details right now what you are saying yeah. is it depends on the company's condition okay it it depends on the company's condition but yes yeah. so that's why the term is balance score card sir yeah, so yeah. that's why you have yeah. to balance yeah. all these four parameters otherwise yes. it gets too screwed yeah there could be future many things but okay that's all yeah. right it is understandable now that yeah. in a given point in time or every year maybe you decide what is more important and then the other okay yes any other questions or we are good to go ahead do i move ahead yes indrajit yes so is there a difference between activity and goal that's a question which i'm asking anyone can say and please um express your mind there is means we are not experts over here that's just what you are what you are expressing let us know what do you feel is there a difference between activity and goal uh, i think uh, activity means uh, a process uh, which is done to achieve a goal great great anyone else Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Please. I would so like to please. answer the same. Uh, the yes, actions, please. set of actions that we take uh, to achieve a goal. Yes. So 
in nutshell like what uh, fatak sir had asked like what's the difference between mission and mission mission is the goal and vision can be the activity okay um just to give an example activity is daily walking for one hour or for 6 am to 7 am whatever the time doesn't matter and the second activity can be follow a diet plan so while setting a goal you have to always ask the magic question in order to like why i am doing daily walking or why i am following a daily diet so the goal is with daily walking what will happen is that your cardiovascular fitness and mental well being will improve by walking 6 km every day uh, don't go with the numbers of kilometers that's just an imaginary figure or you lose 3 kg by following a healthy diet plan for 6 weeks so that's the goal and these are the activities like follow diet plan and daily walking so that's why I ask the magic question in order to what that will answer your goal that will answer the question so one more activity can be spend allocated research budget for new product development as planned by 31st of da 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 da, da year but the goal is make this much profit on npd by 31st of this year questions or is this clear i guess indrajit many questions yeah. will be bumped down later in <clears throat> later on great great right right so i'll just move on so what are the guidelines on goal setting set goals early so um, with the survey what i could have seen or, or what came out is that um, around 50% of them set in the first month of jan that's very good because the later you set your goals the poorer is the quality of results now that's number one number two the number of goals should be limited to 5 to 7 and why i'm selling this 5 to 7 is because <clears throat> if you have a, like say for example i'll give you an example you have lots of apples in your hand so with two hands you can carry how much like say with two two hands you can carry around four to five of apples but if i have four more two or more five and if i if i give it 10 apples you can't carry those so something will spill out so that's why limit the number of goals uh, setting value on each goal is important because that indicates the company priority and importance of particular goal vis-a-vis -vis others we have seen with balance scorecard finance is 35% and rest takes the other percentages and that's why it indicates the company priority <clears throat> fourth is in absence of weights an employer draws his own conclusion or relative importance of the goal so to give you an example of this is that i want to lose weight i want to lose that's it weight or i want to be slim but how much slim do you want to be you want to be like reduce 3 kgs 5 kgs 10 kgs so do you don't have a weight for it so that's why weight is important and to ensure buy in employee should set goal with that immediate line manager so the survey which was sent which said that 70% of the manager sets the goal it should be actually vice versa that <clears throat> to ensure that there is a buy in between the goals the manager and the employee should sit together and then they decide that yes these are the goals for this year we are going to do um second last point is employee may be assigned a goal even if ho if he or she does not have a full control over it there might be some areas of concern like say for example attrition is not in your hands but still you are given the task of reducing the attrition so you might feel oh kya goal de diya yaar boss ne no because it is being taken in the, in the bsc or with somewhere it's it's been taken that goal has been assigned you might not have full control but you still needs to be do and goals must be smart i'll just take a, a pause over here um and ask if there are any questions because we'll go to the next slide which is smart goals any questions yeah. with this so indra in some time hmm. uh, hod cascade his goals to his subordinate hmm. and he do logic of bsc only so my okay. goal should be your goals Right. So this few sometimes HOD is uh, is uh, very smart to just deploy his goals to his teammates so that he need not right. do anything. <laughs> okay, but um, okay uh, to answer your question is that 
it can be like 100 percent he has given uh, everything to like say for example attrition is not only your job attrition reduction attrition is reduction is like like a boss's job and his boss's job to take care of that also so um the percentages might vary with that like say for example the attrition percentage your boss might have taken x percentage and you might have given a greater uh, value for it or greater weightage for it is because you are on in the field and you are doing it so you have to actually do that particular work so that's why he might have given a more um, weightage to that goal rather than him taking a taking that more of the chunk of it because um, it's not that he will be meet like say for example if you if you take a survey it's <clears throat> your um, subordinate or if you are the manager your subordinate's role is to go and talk to people and understand like these are the areas of concern and what was the area of concern why we are doing this and stuff like this does this answer your question indrajit i may want to say something here because in yes. my experience <coughs> this question arises again and again particularly mm. the functional heads or whatever heads yeah. so to say operations of functional they tend to believe that uh, bsc is their performance appraisal target yes yes and that's where the confusion arises like just now uh, the person who asked the question yes. some bosses feel that my result is accumulative uh, result of four of my subordinates yes <laughs> i think this needs to be understood very clearly yes. though maybe uh, time may not be adequate just now but yeah there is a difference and unless it is seen understood and put into the system you likely to be misled by this and um to uh, just my thought on this is that sir the major part of this place is the employee uh, is the company culture or what culture yes. this that the yes. company yes. has it so um okay. what i have observed with let's indian go to smart goals yes so let's go to the smart goals so what are smart uh, it's an abbreviation of um, specific measurable agreed relevant and time bound so that it drives clarity and, and alignment of the goals and the bsc so what is specific is that what why and how a goal is and why we have taken that measurable is how we will be know if we are successful at how we are going to measure agreed is it mutually agreed between the manager and the associate so that's why the um the answer to the question is that it should be smart is it relevant why we are doing this because that's the crux of it like why we want to do this goal and is it time bound to give an example of this let's say that weight reduction is your goal now specifically what is and how much is your goal so let's say for example this year i will be reducing 10 kg of weight is it specific yes is it measurable yes how that i am reducing 10 kg of weight is it agreed yes it should be agreed between your doctor and between you like we are reducing this or between your gym coach or whatever it might be or maybe is it relevant your wife you are not doctor <laughs> <laughs> or is it relevant is that why you are doing this like say for example your body mass index says that because of height and weight uh, because of a, a, there's a, there's a relation between the height and weight and that's why um that's the relevancy so that's why you have to reduce weight and is it time bound like again 10 kg to kam karna hai par kab karna hai matlab ye saal karna hai ki 10 saal ke baad karna hai ya fir agle 2 3 saal mein karna hai so that's why the smart goals has to be done. so that has to be very specific and very clear any questions can you give some examples live examples of what you have experienced these goals were proposed but they were not yes. smart and why yes i have some examples in the next slide if you, if you can all right very Just good sure. yeah. okay so one sales goal example which i saw is that increase in sales order now this is an activity or the magic question is that in order to what so if i increase my sales order my revenue will also increase so increase in sales order is just a a thought process like yes i have to increase my sales order but to increase sales order what what should i do or what 
will that fetch to so that will fetch increase in revenue or something like this. so that's the um, goals example second example is production goal example like effective management of work in progress inventory like okay fine i want to do management of working progress but why so that this will help in reducing the inventory then you have the measure of performance weightage and level of performance and a finance goal again an example is that the finance head says that i will implement cost control initiatives so again the magic question is that fair enough you will implement implement cost control initiatives but what would you do with it so i will be driving cost control measures to ensure that there is a profitability in reduced turnover scenario so that's it clear helps silence is golden i know that yes indra yes indra okay thanks so idp um and with the survey what i have seen is that um, most of you people are aware of idp and 50% said yes we said idp is and 50% said we don't so what is idp is idp is nothing but a tool to assist an employee to for his career and personal development <clears throat> it's the purpose to achieve your short term goals and long term goals so short term can be like say for example you want to improve your communication skills like english speaking skills for this year but for the long term is that yes you can be able to speak in front of 50 people or 100 people that's your long term goals or your career goals might be and mind you that idp is to improve your current job performance and it's not a performance evaluation tool so it should not happen that fine fair enough i am doing a communication skills training and that will help me in performing my job no because it's a self development plan so it's not a um, performance evaluation tool that's one and the second part which comes it into it is that what is it in for the employee and the organization so with idp what happens is that you are aligning the company mission vision and bsc with trainings second thing your supervisor or a manager understand like my employee needs this development needs and third the employee has a buying like yes these are my goals for this year and i will be doing it so you have a say into it and for achieving your current skills or to stay in the in the current job you require this 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 trainings and that's why idp is is kept um idp format very simple if it can be as simple or it can be you can make it as complicated as you can so in idp there is a strength which includes the technical and behavioral skills so there are strengths each individual individual has a strength and there is an area of improvement so 1 2 3 is your strength and 1 2 3 is your improvement uh, mind you this uh, idp should be um, very short and precise it shouldn't be like 50 idps for this year no because you can't achieve 50 idps in a year and you can't uh, fulfill everything so there has to be either one or two based on the best of what what you decide with the skills what you have and your areas of improvement how will you be do, doing the development like you will be you will have a coach you will have an additional assessment you will have trainings for this so by when you will be coming uh, doing this and there has to be a buy in by the employee by his manager and by the head hr or whatever or whoever it is any questions with this no no okay okay so there are some errors in performance appraisals uh, we'll just look into it what are the errors uh, what do you understand with uh, this picture sorry so the ppt played the spoil sport but still the first picture and the second picture the man with in the coat and and the man over here any ideas mm -hmm. the man in the coat might follow a profession okay a lawyer assumption from its dress up and uh -huh. this man could be an athlete mba player okay anyone else anyone else 
would like to take a shot at this. Okay, so one of the common performance error is halo and horn, horn effect. So halo effect is a positive uh, first impression that leads to treat someone more favorably. Like you might feel, oh, fine, this person is in in tie and coat and and is very very good looking. So he might have these and these qualities. So let me rate him. Blah 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 blah. Whereas the horn effect is a negative effect, which gives the impression that uh, someone who is not very good looking. Um, so let's rate him on a lower scale just to give a heads up the man in the court or in the first picture um, who is holding a pen is in his hand is a hard cold criminal he has he has killed around 40 children and he was sentenced to life imprisonment the second picture which uh, is a basketball player his name is sean o michael and um, he is the world number two basketball player so that's how hello and horn effect plays into performance appraisals. Second thing is that the, uh, sorry. Yeah, second thing is that the lenient, uh, leniency error, which rate, which says that a rater rates either in the positive side or in the negative still. Okay, so either you are very good or you are boom, bad. So that's the leniency error which, which happens. <clears throat> Third is the central tendency error. Boss bolta hai ki bhai, apne ko jagda nahi karne ka isme. So sabko jo beach ka hai, wo de do. So either middle jo hai, middle path hum log follow karenge. So everyone is doing or performing well over here. Recency error is that, like you can see this picture is that your evaluation is based on the next 30 seconds. Like, yes, if you're doing this uh, within one hour, I will be rating you good marks or I will not rate you good marks. So recency error is basically the tendency to rate on the recent incidents. It might happen that for whole 11 months, you are you are doing a very good job, but in the last month you goof up something and then your manager remembers, boss, tumne to achcha kam kiya, par wo mein apne ye problem kar diya tha. To mein aapko kam marks de Just a question to it. What do you remember? Uh, uh, or whom do you remember? One who helps you or one who doesn't help you? Definitely one who helps you. You remember those? Yes. Okay. Anyone else would give a shot? Okay. So, uh, theory says is that 60% of people remember those who don't help. So, Help kiya to aap yaad nahi rakhoge ki par acha Indrajit ne to bhi help nahi kiya tha na mere ko theek hai main dekhta hu main kya karta fir usko you remember that whereas Indrajit might have helped you earlier but uh, if recently he has not helped you or you remember that thing so that's how recent error comes in first impression error is that um there's a new employee who is very good in in communication and stuff like this he dresses well and stuff and uh, does all good activities and you feel wow this person has created a first impression and that's why he might be doing his job very well so that's why we you rate him for that entire rating period that my first impression for indrajit was very good so that's why he might be doing tuck, 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 tuck activities well also and similar to me like it happens like like if someone is from um, from Pune or from Kolkata or from the same region, or if you have the same liking towards uh, towards some activity, like you you like sports, you like to travel and something like this, you say, oh, fine, he is like some similar to me, so I would be rating uh, him what whatever ratings I feel sort of whatever rating I have got. So that's the errors which you have. Any questions with this? Indrajit. Yes. One question, whether our uh, yeah. Indian companies or MNCs also hmm. mature enough to have scientific uh, performance appraisal? They do. Uh, in, in MNCs, they do. Uh, but uh, yes, in Indian culture, I don't know. But in, uh, in some of the um, foreign companies, which I've seen, they do follow it. They do follow it. But yes, be, because these are our cognitive human basis and um, these errors do come out. So it's something like like say, for example, if if I have two kids, one I favor someone much more than the other one. That normally happens with 
the human psyche. Okay. Okay. And uh, we come to the last slide, which is bell curve. You people might have heard bell curve or some, something like this, but just to give you an explanation is that bell curve is a system wherein you place employees in the particular categories like below average, average, excellent, or above excellent based on their performances. So if you see this curve is that on the left hand side, your 10% is serious performance and your 10% is excellent performance. And in middle, then you keep the rest of the people. Um, anthropologically, if you if I rate this, and I'm sorry if I'm hurting someone, is that this 10%, you can say, ye gadhe log hai, jo kaam karte hai. 15% log hai, wo khachar log hai, jo 15% that is below expectations. The 50% is basically the bell log, jo kaam karte rete hai, karo, 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 aisa. The next 15%, which is above expectation, is basically an ox. Okay. And the less the next 15%, which is above excellent performance, is actually your horses. Like so that's why you have 10% for horses and 10% for donkeys. Rest comes over it. Thank you. And open for questions. Please uh, switch on your video so that I can see and then we can discuss anything. I yes, request please, any questions, yes. I request everyone who have any questions uh, to please unmute and uh, ask questions, or you can either type them in the chat box. Yes. I think by the time a question comes, uh, what Prashant said, whether Indian companies, MNC companies, I think people are people. Okay. Yeah. So there is no, uh, and we, you know, there are two different things that we're talking about. One is balanced scorecard and the result-oriented management and therefore very simple scoring like you scored so much, you did not score that much. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. The question comes when the issue is the performance appraisal which evaluates you for various competencies. I think that's where the issue of judgment comes. Yeah. And like you have very correctly said, Indrajit, even when you have only two children at home, you uh, you tend to distinguish whether you like yes. it or not. You may never yeah. admit it. You may never tell one <laughs> of the child that yeah. he's favored and the other is not. Yeah. But the matter of fact is that it happens. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very human thing. We don't have to be afraid of it. Yes. We don't have to feel sorry. We must actually prepare ourselves to respond to this sort of a discussion. Because if the honest purpose is that this leads to an improvement in the employee then I think we only yes. can discuss it and reach it out to him, yeah. which by itself is a, uh, you know, a big task. And I think that's the manager's job. Yeah. Because simply saying that I had agreed for so much percentage of profit and I got it or I didn't get it. Mm. I think mm. it's rather simple. There's no yeah. evaluation really speaking yeah. there. All that you are doing is, uh, you know, saying, okay, so much was agreed, but was not delivered or otherwise. The other part is very important and uh, Prashant, since uh, people, uh, believe me, people whether in Spain or England or uh, India or wherever, even Sri Lanka for that matter, yeah. or even Africa, uh, just people yes. uh, in this way, choice is all yours. Yeah, You will be respected if you people find that you are able to stand up uh, mm. to uh, you know, uh, explaining your uh, uh, impression or an assessment. And then proceed to help him to improve it. That is the point. Yeah. I'll just give you an example for this, sir, to add on to what you have said is that I had this impression like Indian companies don't uh, or Indian employees are not very keen towards training and development and stuff like this. So I was of that impression. So I used to tell my manager who is a, who is in UK and who is a British. And she said, okay, fine, Indrajit, let's um, let some days pass on and you let me know what do you feel with the current organization with BP, what you are. I saw that human beings, as you said, all over, they are same. Whether it's Spanish, whether it's UK, or whatever it might be, American or whatever. You have to pull people to come for a training. And we are giving trainings for free, of course, actually. Means we don't even charge from the corporate or, or, or from the particular budget, but still people don't turn up. So I was of this impression like Indians had this, but no. It's worldwide. In fact, in, in one of the companies, I have had to put a target 
to the managers yeah. to ensure that all these steps that you talked about smart goals agreed yeah. goals this that all that we started asking the subordinate whether your manager had done this or not yeah. Yeah. in private yes and based on whatever they told us we identified managers who needed training in these matters training yeah it does anyway i think uh, maybe ask some other questions are ready i sh- i don't want to take over your session anyone anybody else would like to ask and please be open like uh, we are here to understand we are here to learn I means i am also here to learn i am not an expert in in and all this stuff so do ask questions indrajit one question like we saw the balance score card a strategic map like is it frequently used in indian market or like uh, any how does the strategic map and balance score card like how do correlate or how do you balance those two things i am not very aware of the strategic mapping uh, and um, need to see the but, but yes balance score card do balance score card do do play with like majority of the companies do have it some do share some don't but it is it is there balance score card is there okay and and when when it comes to balance score card like we saw those four perspectives uh, there is a relationship between those four perspectives yes. so are they analyzed or like uh, they, i mean those are treated independently yeah those are analyzed actually so that's why i said na that like, is if lakshmi hook karke nahi kaam chalega na saraswati ka bhi kaam chalega so no no the interrelation yeah. between them like uh, financial perspective with the customer perspective or exactly the financial correct. perspective with the group exactly correct those because relations. with like say for example if say for example you you want to earn xyz profits for this year mm-hmm. how will you do you will be doing whether with inorganic growth or organic growth now what is inorganic growth is that you will take care of your the existing customers whatever whatever you have yes and organic growth would be you will be moving out you will be entering into new markets and fetching some new customers mm-hmm. ultimately what will happen if customer comes yeah your profit increases exactly no i mean with new customer how much profit will increase so that relationship is also exactly correct obviously right. obviously so that's yeah. how you have to decide like for this year like say if i if i if i fetch in five customers how much will it increase so that's up to you all people i don't know whether anyone asked this question or not but uh, you know what precedes making a balance score in your experience what all must happen yeah what all must happen uh, before you set uh, so to say balance score card for your organization for a given period of time one is the buy in of everyone yeah. like bringing them into a, yeah bring, bringing them into coming a common platform and telling that yes we are going to do this yes next second is understanding of mission and vision like mm. most mm. of the people don't understand what is the mission and what's the correct. mission vision correct and third thing is that the alignment which yeah. which misses so that's why the picture which i showed is that mm. one person says like we are sitting here and sitting and sitting but the last person and he's talking to his dog and he's saying mm. no i'm with a bunch of crazies कारण का ते कंपनी मध्ये एक जण शाणा असतो कोणतरी हुशार असतो त्याला माहिती असतं अरे गाडव येत रे सगळे पण आपण हे करतो विच इज नॉट राईट सो इट मस्ट अँड बेसिकली सो दॅट्स दॅट्स हाऊ इट्स अ टॉप डाऊन मॉडेल इट्स इट्स आय अग्री आय अग्री नो माय क्वेश्चन वाज वन्स दिस इज एक्सेप्टेड दैट इज वी आर गोइंग टू फॉलो बॅलन्स कोर का यस ओके आय एम टॉकिंग अबाउट अ रूटीन एव्हरी इयर ऍक्टिव्हिटीज ऑर इनपुट्स दैट गो इनटू अ बॅलन्स कोर का सो um obviously with this four parameters with the your with the krs coming into picture and then you have to understand like there has to be an improvement like on yes. a year on year basis it can be like last year humne itna kiya to ye saal bhi itna karenge no one reference point you are telling me is the company's performance okay yes what yes. are the other things that one must consider market survey because that's very important like say with with new customers what you are doing with learning and development what you are going to do with this year or with this year i will be focusing on the this skills so that my employees do not fall back with with the current market mm-hmm. trends what we are doing mm-hmm. so these are some of the areas which you can look at look at mm-hmm. okay now i remember some companies which insist on doing a swot analysis and yeah. review it periodically yeah so that uh, you know what uh, like your idp said use similar concept 
strengthen yourself yeah. and uh, uh, if at all uh, you know recover uh, yourself from the areas of improvement so swat is also rather regularly used yeah any anybody else or we are good to wind up or you would like to ask any questions in chat is there any questions which has come up in chat chat is one more thing nine boxes yeah. is it is nine box also frequently used i'll tell you um, people normally confuse nine box with balance score card or something like this nine box mm -hmm. is predominantly used for succession planning it is a succession mm -hmm. planning stuff mm -hmm. nine box will tell you that this person is at this level like one mm -hmm. two three for that those yeah. nine boxes nine. and with those nine yes, boxes yes. these these are your extremely high performance and these are extremely low performance now with those high performance how you are going to retain them that's one mm -hmm. and with the low performance will you check them out no i would say rather them keeping that at, them at level 1 can we inc move them to level 2 or level 3 can we if no check them out because if you see in a in a nine box planning there's a there's a um swim board swim board kind of stuff like it's it's a boomerang kind of a stuff which goes mm -hmm. up so your top performance can or also uh, can also come down okay okay it can so that's why yeah. nine box is predominantly for succession planning it's yeah. not for so that's why it's not a it's not a performance evaluation tool performance evaluation tool is balance score card and success okay. planning is a um section uh, sorry nine boxes success planning or a development tool okay and is it used frequently or like in organizations nine box it is it is in most of the major big organization they do for succession planning like or like because when i was with mahindra they used to have succession planning or how will you understand like this person has that capability because i might be competent but i might not be capable enough okay okay so to to make me capable enough what needs to be done so indraji i think the nine yeah. box nine, nine box will also help you to understand the high potential employees hmm. to whom we can develop idps yeah so you can means hmm. but then with so nine boxes identification, yeah. identification of high potential employees and the succession planning these are the two uh, output we can get yes but with nine box what happens is it's it's a it's a very long process which you have to follow because it's not a one time activity idp can be a one time activity because what happens is it's very simple to understand like boss these are my strengths for this year or or for, sorry these are my strengths or these are my weaknesses which i would like to cover up for this year um nine box is a continuous process it goes on 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 for like say for 5 years or for 10 years you identify like aniket is a successor for say xyz person and then you identify like this year he is here then this is a, then next year is there okay uh, will you suggest any any uh, review mechanism once we set the uh, uh, kras or kps whatever you call it <clears throat> any timely review system you yes uh, i forgot this actually but that's a great question aniket and thank you for this is mostly what happens is once at the beginning of the year you set goals and then you forget that goes for a toss so at the end of the year are boss ye bola tha ye kiya nahi ye to kiye nahi humne kuch to dusra hi kar rahe so either you have a quarterly review or you have a half yearly review quarterly is good according to me because then after every 3 months you understand like this goals can be achieved or this goals cannot be achieved or this is this goals can be changed or this goals cannot be changed or whatever it may be thank you aniket thank, thank you more questions one more question actually uh, whether yeah. uh, whether it is a nine box or whether it is you know the setting up the goals but don't you think that they are uh, interlinked to each other though this uh, one process is a long process and uh, one process is you know uh, and uh, maybe a year based or uh, something like that so see what happens with succession planning is that say for example if you are my successor or i am your successor will you be success will you be my successor within one year no 
you have to be you have to have my successor after say five years or 10 years down the line you i have to groom you accordingly it can be within one year but with krs what happens is that it's a one year activity because it is smart and it is time bound so that's that's how it, it is differentiated but yes if you uh, consider it in a long term perspective it can be linked out if you want to do it in in a long term perspective why because uh, because uh, whenever uh, the kra kras are given those are reviewed every year so yes. we definitely come to know about a certain person maybe after 3 to 4 years uh, on the different different uh, perspective or a different different kras which are given yes. to him correct no and so okay. on that basis definitely uh, if we are thinking of uh, succession planning i think uh, these things definitely uh, are to be considered while uh, you know uh, planning something for him so i'll just give you an example like i am good in english speaking that's my competence but if it if it if you ask me to go and um give a speech in front of 100 people i might zup come down i might say no that's i i might be shaky around that so i am competent in speaking english but i don't have the competency to speak in front of large public and that competency takes time to develop so in a nutshell you might be achieving your daily targets or your daily or the year, yearly goals but do you have that leadership skill in you do you have that competency to move from this position to this position that takes care with with high potential and what you are doing with that so that's a development plan which you should have with a succession plan with a nine box theory yeah but uh, then uh, don't you think uh, organization must also you know work uh, in this perspective for a particular person they should so, so that's what developing him uh, developing him in different different areas and uh, exactly correct to... so yeah. so your nine box says like santosh shinde is my current successor after 5 years he might or he might not achieve that level of competency so in case if not santosh shinde then what then whom so that there's the next person over there so i agree with you that nine box should be there but again the practice of it is quite difficult so we yeah, are thank you thank you thank you um any more questions no sure thank you thanks thank you everyone uh, indrajit i guess uh, all the questions were actually dumped in the last q and a yes part. yeah i've spoken a lot i have not i'm not used to speak so much but uh, thanks for this actually and um you all need the ppt do i share the ppt with uh, ithape sir so that he can share it to the uh, participants yes please yes. Yeah. so if yeah. you can just give yeah sir you can also share your email id or contact number uh, along with the ppt so definitely it can help uh... i will i will i will I yeah will. thank you sir thank you yes thank you and don't call me sir it's indrajit so yeah okay indrajit thanks uh yes so with this i guess we mark uh, the 103rd which our session a good and a wonderfully closed one thank you so much thanks cheers thank all you. for coming and for listening to me thanks it was, it was good knowledge yes just i want to make one uh, see i got opportunity for audience means i got opportunity to work with uh, indrajit uh, long back when we were in uh, mahindra ci Aniket and I traveled him a lot actually. I have traveled him a lot actually. So, so Aniket was also there, but uh, I have seen uh, complete transformation in him. And uh, I think this is uh, his first uh, public uh, presence, right? Yes. Yes. On any uh, platform. Yes. But there is complete uh, total uh, transformation. Aniket will agree with me. Thank you. Yes, sir. You are right. Yeah. Yes, you are right. Uh, he not only presented very well but uh, he has answered all questions very diplomatically <laughs>
The announcement that I was talking about is the ninth anniversary of OHR, which will be held on the nineteenth of November at nine thirty PM. And when you will be posted and updated by Thape sir, uh, so and so forth. So we would love to see you there, right, sir? Is it nine thirty PM? No, no, six thirty, six. Okay, six PM, okay. not nine thirty, and it will okay. be physical, okay, not online. Great, great, great. Cool. Thank you, sir, for correcting me. Thank It will so be much. at six uh, thirty p.m. And uh, also, thank you, everyone, for joining in and uh, for the wonderful session. Have a wonderful night. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And happy bye. weekend to all. Happy weekend. Thank bye. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye.